Uh, welcome to this presentation on the Australian TCF industry and their attitudes and opinions towards sustainability. Uh, my name is Grant Emerson and my name is Keith Callisher and I do hope you enjoy this presentation. The research undertaken was a study of sustainable development practices within the Australian fashion and textile industry. Keith Collishaw and myself, Grant Emerson, now take you through the presentation. Project aim was to identify and evaluate the Australian textiles, clothing and footwear, TCF, industries, attitudes towards sustainable development practices. It's useful to uh, contextualise the study in the context of the Australian TCF industry, which is sort of in two stages. It's before 1989 protectionism and post-1989, if you like, international competition. Prior to 18, 19, 18, 1989, the Australian TCF industry was protected by both tariff or barrier protection and quotas. It was a full supply chain industry across the total supply chain, which included primary fibre production, both natural and synthetic, uh, right through to retail, and that was the nature of the industry prior to 1989. Post-1989, the Australian government, uh, in 1989 itself, removed quotas and all barrier protection phased out over a 15-year period. And what that led to over the past 20 years is, is a major restructuring of the whole industry. 2011 sees a, an industry where, where manufacturing is niche and is found in technical textiles, which includes the carpet industry, and it's the uh, rest of the manufacturing is essentially located offshore. The major players within the industry are retail, wholesale and brand houses. As you can see from the slide, the offshore shift of labour-intensive manufacturing to lower labour cost countries accelerated through the 90s and into the uh, 2000. By 2010, there was very little apparel manufacturing in the country. The rationalisation of industry led to a hollowing out of supply chains. However, there's been a, uh, a emergence of innovation and specialisation in small specialist manufacturing, as I said, in technical textiles. Industry is very much focused on supply chain strategies which can include local manufacturing and can indeed include offshore manufacturing and of course a natural consequence of this in most first world countries is the dominance of the retail sector in the industry. So when I'm taking the uh, research, surveys were conducted and they were sent out to 435 TCF companies. Of the 435, 95 companies responded which uh, relates to a 22% response rate. Of the companies that did respond, uh, it was identified that 50% come from the manufacturing industry, 21% from the wholesale, brand house, design uh, sector, 16% retail, and 12% other. As you can note, there has been a bit of a bias uh, in the survey towards the uh, manufacturing industry, which is more characterised as the clothing manufacturing sector. The type of respondents to the survey were generally CEO or senior managers responsible for the business performance. A second part of the research undertaken was also focused interviews, which, uh, which was made through uh, individual CEOs and industry leaders. So, to the research. The first question we asked was about their understanding or familiarity with the Brundtland's Declaration on Sustainable Development. The response was 16% said yes and 84% no. We asked the question to try and assess the respondents' exposure to sustainability concepts. And as you can clearly see, it implies that there is little exposure to sustainability literature within the industry. The next question asked uh, what, the, uh, what do they believe are the critical issues for their business company. Reducing costs, obviously, at 88% is very high. Environmental management, 48 Fair labour practice at 47%. Carbon reduction at 19%. Water, 26 Energy at 39%. It's clear from this that reducing costs is a primary driver for business. Only half see sustainability factors as important, with carbon uh, rated very low. There is an awareness of environmental issues and fair labour practices. We asked, do you include strategies for sustainability in your business planning? Very high, 73% said yes, but there was 27% uh, which said no. So it leaves you wonder um, 
you know, one third of respondents did not consider sustainability spe uh, specific strategies in their business planning. Next slide talks about uh, what strategies do they have uh, in place in terms of sustainability. Water management was sitting at 29%, energy management at 41%, fair labor practice at 46%, recycling 70 lean manufacturing 55%. It's clear from this information that recycling is understood as a sustainability strategy, but only half of respondents saw other activities as part of their sustainability response. We asked if they were familiar with the life cycle analysis. 58% said yes, 42% said no. Almost two thirds of respondents who consider sustainability are familiar with life cycle analysis. So what Data logic informs their in sustainability strategies. Life cycle analysis, 29%. Raw material usage, 63%. Consumer, customer demand, 56. Cost savings, 64. Suppliers, 34. None, 4%. Cost drivers, including raw material use, are important factors, which a majority of respondents saw as part of their sustainability response driven by need to reduce cost and respond to consumer customer needs rather than quantitative data. We asked if what are their primary drivers for sustainability strategies. Government legislation, 25%. Consumer customer needs, 68%. Cost reduction, 51%. Protecting the environment was sitting at 62%. It is clear from this that companies are responding to customer needs and a recognition of the growing importance of the environment. Does the government and all industry provide assistance in any way, provide information to assist in implementing sustainable practices? Yes said it was sitting at 35%, but no was at 66%. The majority of the companies are developing sustainability response independently of any external agency or knowledge of. We then followed up with some secondary research just to reinforce the uh, electronic work we were doing with some focus interviews with individual CEO and industry leaders and uh, the work there tended to confirm the, uh, the findings that you've just seen in the previous slides. All, all of these people acknowledge no formal sustainable development strategies in place due to a paucity of knowledge and understanding of sustainable practices and strategies. And that's what each of the individual CEOs said. There was a recognition that a business needs to be a responsible citizen and a sustainability strategy can deliver real benefits and competitive advantage. As, as one discussed it further with people who said they had no uh, prior knowledge of sustainability literature or sustainability practices, it was clear that they were being influenced and it was almost an altruistic desire by CEO to do something in response to sustainability. What those drivers were was unclear. However, managing costs through waste reduction and reduction, reduction in cost inputs are being seen as a sustainable response. However, all, all said they would be that's a natural part of running a business, and that is minimising their costs. They're now translating that work into a sustainable response. So conclusions. Firstly, over 30% of companies did not have a sustainability response or strategy focused upon sustainability. Sustainable responses by industry not driven by a strong understanding of sustainability practice. Sustainability strategies are captured in a cost containment activities Recycling was a major response to external drivers, i.e. consumer, customer, driven and re recognition of environmental issues. The conclusions that one can draw and then build on that around, around a discussion would that uh, there would appear to be no real external driver for industry in Australia to adopt sustainable development planning. It was interesting that there was no um, majority of the companies did not appear to be influenced by uh, government policy, which does reflect the paucity of government policy in Australia. However, in discussions with the CEO, and it came out through the surveys, that industry is aware of the need for a sustainable response. But in that case, they're responding altruistically or for competitive advantage. There's no contrived strategy, if you like, for sustainability, and they're adopting existing practices and regarding them as sustainability. 
Cost management is an example through reduction in consumption. That is seen as a primary sustainable activity. Management of water for dye houses, management of energy in particular as energy prices rise in Australia. Recycling is a genuine response. I think it is fair to say that recycling, uh, most of uh, the materials would have gone to uh, landfill in the past uh, 15 years ago. That is a genuine response by the companies there, which is in reaction to probably the external environment of consumers, uh, consumer awareness of sustainability, and companies are seeing recycling as something that they can do, but it also benefits the bottom line. Now, this work was aimed at developing what is the response that we as an educational institution should do. And the educational challenge for us is to provide an informed sustainable, sustainability environment through graduates and indeed industry connectivity. So it will allow us uh, at RMIT University perhaps develop specific uh, training and education, information sessions, seminar, seminars and inform our research so that we can go out into industry and assist with the development of their knowledge of sustainability practices. Well, that uh, concludes our presentation. So we thank you for uh, tuning in and listening to it. We hope you found it interesting. If there's any questions you have at all, you can uh, contact myself, uh, Grant Emerson, at rmit.edu.au. Thank you for watching this presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, as per the slides, uh, if you have any information, please give uh, me an email at grant.emerson at rmit.edu.au. Uh, and for now, it's goodbye from Australia. Thank you.